Many pilots were killed to get through into the supersonic. They could fly their planes and test pilots 600 miles, 650 like most planes now fly over the seas, Atlantic and so on. 700, it started to shake. It was called the sound of barrier. We call it in the spirit, we preachers have been around a long time. We call it the demon wall. The devil stands hard because he knows a few more inches and we go bam into the superstar. We're in another world of the glory of God. Amen. And everything's going to flow. Amen. All sickness will leave us. Amen. All disease will leave us. Amen. We'll have more in one event we can even imagine. Amen. Everything's going to change. Amen. And that's why the devil fights you about everything at the moment. Every little thing. He's fighting you because he just wants you to stop and look at the circumstances, look at the problems, and say, I can't do this anymore. The devil is a liar! Yeah. The devil is a liar! Yeah. Don't listen to his voice. Hear what the Lord is saying. Yeah. And so, Holy Spirit is very important. It's basic, but it's not basic. It's just important. So it's basic, and it's not basic. And so I say that I'll explain it in a minute. It's basic and it's not basic. Speaking in tongues seems basic, the beginning of your salvation, but it's not basic. It's very, very powerful and very advanced. So I'm going to take you through that in a moment. Hey, can we stand for the reading of God's Word? Book of Acts, chapter 19. Thank you for coming to the front, as Pastor Winnie had said, so spontaneously. That's a part of the Lord's DNA for his church. It's wonderful. And it came to pass, verse 1, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, these are believers, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. <clears throat> then said the Apostle Paul, John the Baptist verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. Well, I'll get my new mic sorted out next week, all right? Everyone praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you. And uh, verse 3. How were you baptized? And they said unto John, Thank you. That one sounds okay. That was fine. I'll stay with that. Bless you. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. That was All right. Verse 4, and Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. Everyone say Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke in tongues, and what did they do? Prophesied. And prophesied.
prophesy. And all the men were about twelve. My Heavenly Father, I ask for the engrafted word to be released today. I ask that every ear will be open. Every spiritual ear will be open. Every heart will be open. That there will be in this teaching your revelation and your understanding that every person will hear the word of God and hear this teaching and be changed. We give you glory and honor. Take us, Lord. You've got us on this flight. We're flying. We're flying in the air, in the spiritual air of God. And we know the, the pressure point. Lord, is there in front of us. But you made this ministry, this church, to be the sharp end of the arrow. We're talking differently here, here because we're the sharp end of the, the arrow. We cut through right now. We break through now. We cut right through in the name of Jesus Christ. Please take your seat. Put your hands together and give the Lord praise to Okay. I'm going to my presentation, please. Hopefully it's there. From last week. Reset. Everyone say reset. Reset. All right. Let's have some fun. Here. Everyone say reset. Reset. I'm waiting for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. It's all warfare. This is all warfare. I'm used to this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone will read the title, Reset. Reset. The line underneath, 12 reasons why believers should speak in tongues. And below my name and the name of our church. Amen. On the next page is the uh, just an overview. We'll deal with these a little more in detail in a few minutes. So the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost that comes into your life, you will speak in tongues because it's the initial evidence of the Holy Spirit's indwelling power. That means the Spirit of God living inside of your body. That's what this is truly all about. When Jesus was with his disciples, they said to him and he said to them, the Spirit is with you. The day's coming, I will live inside you. That's the, that's the deal. It is your prayer language, your spiritual training gift, singing language, the message to the church, ministry gift. It's a deliverance function and it builds faith. Protects us from invisible dark powers. Amen? Amen? All right, now let us begin. The first reason why we're speaking tongues was promised in the Old Testament prophecies. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, God prophesied with stammering lips and another tongue, I will speak to my people. God used tongues to gather his people. Tongues is related to a language that you do not speak in your indigenous language, your native language. It's a language outside of there, and it's the language that comes from heaven that God gives you when you are filled with his spirit. Amen? Amen? Amen. There's a lot of doctrine rising up that God doesn't do that anymore. Uh, I wouldn't believe that if I were you. We are going by the word of God. The Bible is the final authority on all teaching. And all doctrine, all explanations, the Bible. Everyone say the Bible. The Bible. This is the final authority on any given teaching. Any kind of teaching, this Bible is the final authority. 
because this came from Almighty God. You understand? So this is what I'm following. I'm not doing anything else outside of Bible teaching. The reason to tongues is the initial sign and evidence that the Holy Spirit has come into your life in a fuller way. We just read the story in Acts 19 that these guys were believers. They were also preaching. Paul saw them and he just felt like something, they were doing well, but he felt like something was missing. So he went up to them, he says, hi, oh, you've, you've done really well in your preaching, um, but have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you've been believing? And they said they hadn't even heard of that. So there's many preachers who preach, and you probably listen to them, nothing wrong with that, but they're preaching, but they do not have the fullness of the Holy Ghost. And lots of them on the internet, I see them there, and they preach against speaking in tongues. And they say it's wrong. Then you have another group that say, we should not speak in tongues in the church. Has anyone heard that? When we're together, we should not speak in tongues. Has anyone heard that? Please put your hand up if you haven't heard it. It's no problem. I'm, you haven't done anything wrong. I've heard that in many places. And sometimes people come to a church like this and they, we say, we see the Holy Spirit. They got that in the back of their minds that it's wrong to speak in public in tongues. Now, the Bible does not teach that. It doesn't teach that at all. Amen? Amen. And so I'll explain that in a few moments. Someone remind me, Pastor, remind me to cover that, please. All right. So in the Bible, Acts chapter 2, when all the 120 who were with Jesus at his ascension, 120 listened to him. He spoke to 500, and 380 did not listen to what Jesus did. Man, the man just rose from the dead. Come on. He's just ascending up. You know he's the Son of God. You know he's God in the flesh. He's telling you what to do. And 380 did not listen. Only 120. And the 120, they went to the upper room. They didn't know what they were going to receive then, but the Spirit of God came on them and they began to speak in other tongues. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 10, there was a man called Cornelius. He was a Gentile, a non believer. And Peter was a strict Jew. He would never go into the house of a non Jew. He was, it was, that's how it was, a separation. But God spoke to him and showed him all unclean beasts. God, God showed him in a vision and put a pig in front of him and different animals like that. And which you, you don't, the Jewish people did not eat. And God said, kill me. That's yours, Peter. Peter rose up and said, this is the devil, get behind me. You know, he said, this is the devil. And he fought against the vision. But God showed him that three times. He didn't know that God was going to bring him into a house of a nationality which he would not know me. And so God set him up in Acts 10. Peter had to go to a particular house. And it was a man called Cornelius. And uh, he was uh, he was uh, he was a soldier. And he went into his house and all the family was there. So Peter goes in teaching the word of God like I'm doing now, not really believing that these people would have full salvation relationship with God. But right there, as he was teaching, the Bible says, as he was teaching, the Spirit of God fell on the, the people that were listening in that room. And all received the Holy Ghost. And all of them would start speaking in tongues. Then Peter now is caught, is caught in his mind. What do I do? He saw the Holy Spirit. Now that's the first time that the Holy Spirit came down on people before they were baptized in water. Yes. 
And God had to do that because Peter had no plan. He just thought he was going there to teach them and off we go. But God showed him, Peter, I'm in charge here. You're not in charge. I'm in charge. And God sent the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit on Peter. Through Peter on them. And they spoke in tongues. And Peter says, we can't hinder these people from being baptized. He just, he, 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 his whole belief system was overturned. And most of us have belief systems. And that God is trying to overturn our belief systems. That we will fall in line with his steps, what he's doing. And that's why early in the service, I just sat there, I was crying a little bit. And I was just watching everything. And I realized that God is stepping into the church. And he is orchestrating it his way. Not our way. Not Apostle McLeod's way. No leadership way. It's not our way. It's his way. If I say the Lord's way. Come on, say it back to me like you believe it. If I say put your finger up, God's way. If I say God's way. Come on, shout it. God's way. Hallelujah. It's God's way. It's not my way. Praise the Lord. If I say God's way. Three times God's way. God's way. The Lord's way. Alright, that's how it is. And so in Acts 19, we just read that, and again, it was a group that didn't quite believe anything, but the Holy Spirit came down and they spoke in tongues. And that's why you must speak with tongues. Amen? Amen. Now, when you're speaking in tongues, all those who speak in tongues, give me a wave. Alright. Now, when you speak in tongues, it's for spiritual edification. Right? The first Corinthians says in verse 14, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Now the word edification means putting on muscle, building themselves. See, so if you don't speak in tongues enough and you've got, to, let's put it this way, you doubt yourself a you are, see, today we have counseling systems, which are great, they work. We have all sorts of things like that for which they work. Pastor and I, we were trained in counseling when we went to Bible school. We had to do a whole course on, on counseling. It's very important, you, you, you know, it's fantastic, it's needed. But what I'm saying is, what God did through the Holy Spirit, when you speak in tongues a lot, the tongues will give you a lot of wisdom. Amen. Amen. Wisdom. It gives you power. It gives you wisdom. It gives you spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is far more advanced than natural knowledge. Amen. Spiritual knowledge, now don't get me wrong, I... You all know, all those who know me, I believe up to the hill in education. I'm, I, I'm an education promoter, you know that. But I'm going to tell you something, spiritual knowledge by the Holy Spirit is more advanced than any PhD. Amen. 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 I've spoken to PhDs, I, I, I spoke to people of high, a high level. Yeah, the Duke of Westminster. I went to, uh, I used to be invited to the House of Commons quite regularly, used to go over here. And then I was taken in, the Duke of Westminster came and he grabbed my hand, one of the richest people in the country. He says, Come with me. I was wondering why, there was only 20 of us in the group. And we had dinner at the, um, the House of Commons Speaker's House. You all know who the speaker is? Yeah, I was there in the speaker's house and we're having dinner. Duke of Westminster came in and he picked me up the room. He held my hand because I was wondering where he's taking me. And he took me into the room and we're just having a good conversation. And you see, because, you know, as much as I may be what they might see as being simple, I could hold a conversation with the Duke. Do you understand? And I quickly was up at his level of talk because the spirit God in me is very powerful. Amen. It is not to be underestimated. Amen. 
See, and that's why you've got to hang around the Spirit more than you do. Because knowledge comes with it, and authority comes with it, and power comes in it with it, and then you become favored. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying? He cannot, he didn't, why did he pick me? Yeah, I'm thinking, because I felt little me while I was there, but he picked me, and he took me into a room, and he says, oh, he says, you know who, who this room is, don't you? I said, no. Is it this red, covered with red sheets? It was a bed. It was a room. He says, this is where Her Majesty comes to sleep if she wants to, for certain reasons. And he told me. I thought, well, I've been hoping about that for years. It's not a secret. The thing is, you see, God gives you favor because the Spirit's on you. And the Bible says when David, he was young, but he had the Spirit on him. The Spirit was on him. The Spirit was on him. He didn't speak in tongues, he didn't speak in tongues in the Old Testament, but if it was, he would have been the first speaker of tongues. David, little David, that's why he killed Goliath. That's why he was favored. That's why upon him, he could kill the bear, he could kill the lion, he could do all kinds of things. He was chosen to be king. God rejected Saul because of Saul's pride. Pride, the pride in Saul later wanted to kill David and murder him. But David had the spirit of the Lord in him. And that's what we're saying. More speaking in tongues will edify you. Build that muscle. Build sinew. Build command. Build everywhere you go. It will change. The, the, the waves will part for you when you walk in a certain direction. People will get out of your way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise so God. how do we do this? If I, Because that's important to, to tell you how. I say to people, you should speak in tongues at least 15 minutes a day, and that's quite short. But I say 15 because I know the Spirit's going to lead you to do half an hour a day, constant tongues. No, no English, just tongues. Knowledge comes with that. See, so if I have a crisis all my life in the Lord, when I have a crisis, I speak in tongues. My English language is inadequate. It doesn't get the job done. It gets you so far. So that's why God gave you his language. Because you see, we're there fighting with the problem in our own language. Oh Lord, help me. Oh God, turn this around. And nothing's wrong with that. That's okay. But that's your natural self. But God gave you his language to come and tear it up. Tear it up. Tear it up. Tear it down. You don't know what you're saying. It's cutting. It's cutting off. It's breaking through. You stay with that for half an hour every day. Your life will change. After a while, half an hour is not long enough. You start to enjoy and you lay there bathing in the presence of God. And His presence comes more and more upon you. And what I must seek, and what I must seek, I must seek the, Holy the Holy Spirit. You see, church, where I grew up, and many of us did, I told you about the altar warmers last week, yeah? yeah? And six of us praying every week to speak in tongues, for me, one year, four months. But I saw people who received the Holy Spirit, and I watch them, because I watch people. Do you know I watch you? I watch everybody. You might say, you say, he's not looking at me. I can feel you. I, that's what the Spirit does. It makes you very, very sensitive. And I don't want you to find fault. I'm always encouraging. I'm an encouraging person. And so what I saw in the church, people who came here, prayed for six months, to receive the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues, as soon as they got the tongues, they went, ah, I've got it. Testimony time, just testimony. I've received the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking in tongues, praise the Lord. And that was it. After that, they put their feet up. The Holy Spirit is given to you as a driver. Yeah. It's an engine. Yeah. It doesn't stop. Yeah. 
It's an engine. See, and it's there to take you from one stage to another. The Holy Spirit. I was sharing this with someone the other day. Uh, I was taken to court. I was taken to court for a crime that I did not commit. And I was attending college. But you see, I was married, Pastor. Was I married? In the college? You'll get the story in a minute. They won't say the Lord will help Pastor when you're in the school. <laughs> now, the thing is, I didn't, it was, you know, it was a crime. But I was innocent. It wasn't my fault. But you can't tell that to people when the police and you know, they are arrested. And they put me in a, the, the van. So we arrested you. And I took it. And I had to go to a special court called police court. And uh, they asked me, do I want to, do I want to go through the process, you know? And I remember, you see, that morning before I left to go to that court, I spoke in tongues. I just spoke in tongues. I don't know how long, it was about an hour. But I was desperate. So when you're desperate, speak in tongues. Amen. Don't rush to the meeting speaking tongues. Because the tongues is the language of God. It's not our language. He's speaking, he's living inside here. God is not over there. God is not in the air. And we're reaching, he's in the air. As Jesus said to his disciples, right now I'm with you, but after I must go away. And I'm going to come back in another form. Which is called the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. And I'm going no longer to be, I'm not going to be with you anymore. I'm hanging on to you. He says, No, I'm going to live, I'm going to live inside you. Everyone, amen. amen. I'm going to live inside you. So then the, the Spirit inside you wants to pray for you. And wants to pray for your children. And wants to pray for the fact that I'm going to go down. And I prayed that morning. And there, all I can say, God overturned the whole case. I didn't go there with a lawyer. That's bad. that's bad advice. I can always have a lawyer. I went without a lawyer. And I went on my own. All I did was speak in tongues. Was it faith? In fact, it was a bit of stupidity, really. I should have had a lawyer. But I went along in my innocence. And that's what happened. And then God delivered me. Amen. And then years later, I became a magistrate. God has the last laugh. Yes. I'm saying to you in Jesus' name that God is with you. Yes. Let the spirit loose in you. Come on. Yeah, you talk all day, we do all day, and then we go to pray, Lord, now lay me down to sleep. Lord, keep me, I pray. Amen. No, what's inside of you wants to operate. Praise I said he wants to operate. He wants to move things out for tomorrow. Tomorrow is already sorted for you. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples that. He said, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is already set. Yeah. God has got it set and he's got he's taking care of it already. Amen. See? And that's what tongues does. It connects you with your tomorrow. It connects you uh, it edifies you. It makes you stronger. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Now let me get, I want two people to show you something quick. Just any two people, just come, stand, one stands here, one stands here. Thank you, Sister Sandra. Just stand on the pulpit, and then just do that bullet there. Robert does not speak in tongues. He only speaks to, in tongues when he comes to church. Sister Sanja speaks in tongues every morning. 15 minutes, 20 minutes every day. I need help. Maybe a healing or something. And I've got pain or something. So I meet, uh, I meet Robert. He's going to pray for me. Pray for me, Robert. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so he does that, and nothing really happens. Sandra, you pray in tongues every morning. Yeah, every morning. See what's inside her. She's got a river flowing. Yeah. She's got a block blast, block busting power in there. She doesn't know it. She doesn't know it. But I come to her, pray for me, please. And I'm <laughs> I got it. It's in the spirit. Everyone say it's in the spirit. It's in the Holy Ghost. Thank you so much. <laughs> It's in the Holy Ghost. It's, everyone say it's in the Spirit. Alright, let's go. Now, the re everyone say reason number four. Reason number four. This is for people, you know, all of us. There's times we're just getting a bit down in some way. Uh, not a good week. But what happens with tongues? It reminds us that the Holy Spirit is indwelling yeah. you and me. Yeah. It's his indwelling presence. You see, for years church is taught in this country. I'm not having a bash at anybody, but the truth is, everyone taught that the Spirit of God, you don't have to feel God. God is there, but you don't need to feel him. You, by faith, you must believe that he's there. You see, but see, God is wiser than that. See, Jesus came wiser than that. And he said, I'm going to fill you with the power. Yeah. And he wants you to fill him every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. No break. Every day. Yeah. And that's why you speak in tongues. Because when, at first you start speaking in tongues. You might just say, oh, maybe I'm just repeating some words I did the other day. But stay with it, stay with it, keep speaking, keep speaking. And all of a sudden, there's a shift. And the tongues will change, and then you will know, this is not you, this is not me. The tongues is the Holy Spirit taking you into a higher level language. And you're listening to this, and God is proving to you. He lives inside of you. And people will come and tell you, no, you, you don't have God. No, 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 no. Some come prophesying you, no, God's not there. No, you have God for yourself. You know, you know that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You know that. When I got filled with the Spirit, people everywhere, because I went everywhere. I say that, I, 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 went, I went all around, all my friends, school, all my families, extended families, I told them I'd receive the Holy Ghost, I told them I'd receive Jesus, I went everywhere. And you see, my friends, that the Spirit of God in you wants to extend himself to touch everybody around you. But it comes by you speaking in tongues more and more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So John 14, 16, 17. For he, the Holy Spirit, dwells with you and shall be in you. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, reason five. 
Everyone say release of fire. Let's have a little bit of fun here. Tongues will keep our, uh, everyone read together. Tongues will keep our prayers in line with God's prayer. Now that's the thing. So sometimes we might be praying something and God won't back it. You understand? He, he, he's not in it. But we try to get it and we pray and beg God and it never comes because God is not for it. Now, the thing about tongues, it will keep your prayers in line with God's will. So you don't know what you're praying about, but you're, you're asking God for an answer and you're saying to yourself in Romans 8, 26 explains, you need God to do something for you now. And when I, when I say this, we all need God to do things for us now. But when people pray outside of God's will, and they'll say um, uh, things like, it's a difficult one. I want to be careful what I say because I counsel a lot of people. So I don't want to actually say it but because I might touch some of you. Um, but I'm not saying that you pray outside of God's will, but I don't want to touch any subject. Do you follow, follow me? So, for example, the best way I can put it, oh God, I'm praying that I can buy a Rolls Royce tomorrow. Brand new from the show. You see what I'm saying? And the thing about that, when it's from the showroom, and you say from the showroom, and you know it's going to cost you seventy-five thousand pounds cash, and then all we have in our bank is five. We've got five pounds. So it's hard to go to God and say, God, right now I want to do this, and you go to ask Him, God, I'm going to buy that, but you don't have the money, and you don't have the uh, financial status to take a long to buy. God will save you from the embarrassment. He won't allow you to do it. You pray all day, all night, he's not going to allow it. Praise the Lord. Back in my days as, as, as a teenager, a lot of guys, um, you know, used to buy big cars and things. And the thing about it, they didn't have a second shirt in their wardrobe. That's what people say. They didn't have anything. And they, they put all their money into a depreciating asset. So sometimes we ask God for things and we're begging him and we're fasting and praying. It's not God's will. And the tongues won't even come in. You'll be there trying to speak in tongues and you're tripping and tripping and tripping over the words. It's not coming because God's not in agreement. Yeah? And so what tongues does for us is this. In Romans 8:26. We don't know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, that's the Holy Ghost, makes intercession for us. In other words, the Holy Spirit sees you're struggling, you're praying, you're praying, you want this thing to happen, and it might be a good thing that's supposed to happen for you. But you might want it now. And the Holy Ghost is praying, Lord, it will not be now. It will be in three months' time, three years' time. God is setting the standard. And that's why the Holy Ghost is in your life. You see, my friends, we're in a world that is full of a lot of self-will. And uh, you have to separate yourself out. We are three parts. We're not two. We are spirit and we are body. And in the middle is what's called a soul, the co-joining of the two, the joining. Soul is joined to the, the body and joined to the spirit of man, of the human beings. And the soul will follow who is strongest. The body is strongest before you met Christ. Before you met Christ, your body is in charge. When you see Christ, it was about the new birth. It came to reset man. Amen? When Adam was born or made, his spirit was the strongest. He fell in sin, so now he needed to be reset. That's why Jesus came as the second Adam. Not all coming in the flesh, but more in the spirit. And then he gave us the spirit 
by the Holy Ghost are speaking in tongues to reverse the curse and the control of Adam. So our, we are to be not like Adam. We are not Adam. We are of Jesus, the new man, the new Adam. That's why the spirit, that's why Jesus says he died on the cross and he gave up the ghost so that we may receive the Holy Ghost. A ghost is not holy. A ghost is seen to be an advanced thing, a frightening thing. That's why it's called the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, before the 1900s, the scripture for those two words was always Holy Ghost. It was never Holy Spirit. It got changed by translators. Amen? That's why I use them interchangeably. Because the Holy Spirit idea, the ideology came in and we that have been around for a long time, new people now don't know this. And I said new in the last 30 years. They don't know this. You see, the Holy Ghost speaks of suddenly. Bang! An operation that's coming with force. That's the Holy Ghost. And man in the wanted to water that down, use the phrase Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. When God, see God didn't come that way, it came with Holy Ghost, bam, on the day of Pentecost and it's the same for you. You must let him come into your body. You must let him speak through your mouth. You must let him fill you through and through every day. Because every time he fills you, every time you speak in tongues, God gives you an extra degree of authority and his power. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 That's why I use the Holy Spirit's title. I use the Holy Ghost. I use both. Because it's very important to understand that God is a consuming fire and he comes with great power, he comes with great force, and we must fear God. Amen. We live in a time where people don't fear God. People just do what they want to do. But the Holy Ghost in you more and more will make you have a reverential fear. You will have a respect to God. You will love God. You see, let's take this building, this church. Everyone say reset. Reset. If you went to a Jewish synagogue and you see how they come in, the Holy Spirit, they're respecting Elohim. They don't understand Jesus yet. They will in the end. They will fall down to Jesus and accept him as their Lord. But it's after the tribulation and the Armageddon and all those things that are coming still. See? And this is very important to understand. And that's why we have access to where the Jewish priests can only go once a year. Every time you come into the church and you feel God's presence, this is where one, the priest could only come once a year. And if he had anything on him that was negative, he would die. He had to put a chain and a bell on his ankle. So if he had a speck of dust on him, he would die in front of the Ark of the Covenant. I think some of you have seen the Ark of the Covenant maybe by Indiana Jones with a box and they were trying to get inside. That's the Ark of the Covenant. You can't touch it. Hollywood depicted it quite well, but every time you come into the church, you know, we shouldn't be, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, nice to see you. Woo, good to see you, my friends. We shouldn't do that. It's holy. It's 
Try and do that in a Catholic church. Try and do that in a Church of England church. You can't do that. See? So we have to reset. Somebody say amen. amen. I was late for a service once. It's one of my friends. He used to preach in Watford years ago. And he had a meeting in London. But I got there late. When I got there late, now I'm supposed to sit at the front. I'm one of the VIP people. And prayer was going on. We were reading the word. And they shut the doors. And I was out there and said, oh, Bishop McLeod, you're here. Let's get you through. No. I had to wait. Because the word of God was being read and prayers were being made. Come on, man. Was that the Catholic Church? No, it was a Pentecostal church. We have to get the order. We have to get the order right. The approach got to be right. Praise the Lord. Something Bishop said this a few times, and I've said, he says, back in the day, when you had your problems, you didn't come into the sanctuary. You went out somewhere in the other rooms, and you prayed out everything that was going on with you, and when you sorted yourself out with God, then you took a tentative step into the sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Things have got to change. There has to be that order about things of God. There has to be the order. The order, everyone say order. order. Not a nice word, but everyone say order. order. In the House of Commons, order. order. See, the order is very important. And do you know people love order? People don't love order when they're breaking order. But the truth of the matter is, the best of us, we love things in order. I love things when I used to, my cuisine has changed a lot. And certain things I don't eat much anymore. But there's certain things I used to like. And I could go into Asda and have an order. I could walk in there with my eyes closed, which aisle, I know where I'm turning. I know what I'm getting. I'm going down that aisle, I'm here, I open, and I take what I want. It's always a treat, it's something I really like. But one time they changed, they do it now, they changed up the order to deter thieves. Yeah. And I went in there and it took me half an hour to find that thing which takes five minutes because we love order. Yeah. And God is a God of order. Yeah. Not fear, I'm not trying to make you frightened. I'm just teaching us that there has to be an order. Everyone say order. order. There has to be order. Order is the key of God's power. Some of you are struggling with it, so let me give you a word. Uh, David wanted to go back and collect the Ark of the Covenant, which the Philistines had held on to for many years. Amen? And when he went down there, he, his, one of his servants called Uzzah was killed. The Ark was falling off, uh, uh, the, what's called a threshing floor. And he was stumbling, he touched it, and he died. And David was angry with God for a long time. And so he went to God and he got it sorted out. In the end, they brought the, they brought the wonderful ark. The ark, I'm going to finish right here. The ark now comes back to David, but he's scared of it. Because it's the presence of God. This is what I'm trying to say to us. Not to be frightened of God, but have better respect for God. Everyone say reset. 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 Everyone say reset. reset. So if we don't walk in anyhow into the kingdom of God, into the church, we walk in with a high respect to the atmosphere. See, what you're feeling a while ago was the, that was the atmosphere of heaven invading us. So we must respect that atmosphere. Amen? So now David is scared. So what he does, he says, I can't handle this. That thing killed the Uzzah, one of my choice servants. I don't want to be, I don't want to die either. So he says, let's send it to a, a guy who's poor. He's got nothing. He's living in a bad house. Rain's coming down. He's got, no, he tries to, uh, his field and his crops, they're not growing. He's a poor man. He's no good. He's just, at the end of life, he's nothing. He says, send the ark there. And when the ark came, 
and it was in this man's house called Obed Edom. It really means Edom is a cursed generation. Obed it means a, is a son of a slave. He is nothing. And what happened there? And Obed Edom had heard about the killing of the priest, the young Levite, Usa. And he said to himself, to the family, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but this is what obviously happened. He says, Listen, family, this thing can kill. See, the, the Holy Spirit without the blood will kill us. You understand? It's the blood which we sang about. The precious blood of Jesus allows the Holy Spirit to come in us and we don't die. Amen. Amen. He said, I don't know this preaching before. I've lived my life on this principle from the Word of God. All my life in the Lord, I've lived this way. Do you understand? And so, over him, he says to his family, look, this thing killed everybody. It caused emeralds and all kinds of sicknesses to fall on the Philistines. And when they opened it, it killed thousands of them. It's in, that, it's in our house. David the king put it here. We best be respectful to it. Yeah. And he says, let's sing some songs. And he put it in his living room. The high priest of Bimelech had that ark. And it was in his house for seven years. And he didn't take any notice of it. Now, right, I got there. And right now, the Spirit of God came in there. And I imagine him singing like this. Uh, he can't sing. He's a growler. So he tries to sing. And he goes, oh. No, you wouldn't get onto TV with that. Yeah, it's just finished, right? But what's what happened? And he's singing and playing. Within a week, he looks outside and all the crops are grown. There's bananas, or whatever he's got, cucumbers. They weren't normal size either, they were that size. That's biblical. That's history, biblical for God's people. All their fruit and that was double the size. A grape, one grape would be that size in the Bible for God's people. And he, had, he went into the blessing straight away. He woke up the next day and his roof was fixed. Didn't know how to do it. He looked in his garden, there was a brand new uh, Range Rover. Uh, Mercedes out there as well. He's wondering where it's coming from. And the reason I can say those things, or God doesn't use those words, is because three months later, David inquired about Obed Edom. How's he getting on? Because usually the answer is he's been buried by right now. And what happened was when the, his, the officer reported to David, David was shocked. He was shocked as to the increase of prosperity that this man of God, remembering David is a king. He is used to receiving tribute from nations that he's conquered. They would come with linen and silk and gold and diamonds and all those things. But what Obadidim received was beyond anything else, beyond any tribute he had received before. David was shocked. He says, go and get him, go and get him. Bring him to me. He knows how to woo God. He knows how to pray. He knows how to, how to sing. He sings like an animal, but it don't matter. His heart is right by God, and I'm going to bless him. And God blessed him, and God said, bring him to the temple. And Open Eden brought 68 of his family, his standing family, went there, and he was the doorkeeper in the temple, because he knew how to woo. He knew when they brought the ark in. He knew, he knew what to say in them. And it brought blessing on the nation. They promoted him, and then he became a porter in the temple. 
who was promoted because of Obedino. God is looking for some worshippers in this church. God is looking for some worshippers in this church. And do we have some worshippers in this church? Or ten? We've got some worshippers in this church. Do we have some worshippers in this church? You see, this is how the Holy Spirit moves upon us when we worship. He comes close to us. He's not asking us to have to speak in tongues in a dry way. There's an approach. We confess our sins every day. We ask him to wash us with his blood. And then we begin to worship God. Amen. Let us stand in his presence. Let's lift up our hands to God and worship.
in what is known as subjection. James 3 verse 8. But the tongue no man can tame. It is unruly. It's evil. It's full of deadly poison, said James in the Bible. But that's why God gave us tongues. He's showing us that he's in control of our mouths. We're not gossiping anymore. We're not 